Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of what might be one of the strangest knives I've ever had on the channel, and that is this little guy right here. This is the Winter Blade Co. Factor. Now, um, first off, in the name of full disclosure, I got to let you know this pre-production prototype was sent along um, by the maker, by Winter Blade Co. He reached out to me and said, hey, Nick, I got a production version coming. Are you interested? And at this point in time, you know, I've owned a bunch of knives by him uh, on the custom end. I've never really done videos because he couldn't make enough of them to, uh, you know, support 140,000 people worth of interest. But nonetheless, um, you know, when he said he's making a production version, I sent him my full disclaimer. I told him I want to talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. Um, it might be a gem. It might be junk. He did still send it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Next thing, um, let's do some size comparison real quick. And what we're going to see here is this is um, actually not that big. If we put this up next to the Spydeco Delica, what we see is that sharp and blade length wise, these are almost identical. Um, but this guy is actually a little bit bigger in the handle than the Delica here. Um, here it is against the Ontario Rat number two. Um, and what we're going to see here is again, this is a little bit taller, certainly than the, the Delica or the Rat 2, and especially when closed. If I go ahead and put this guy down into closed mode, what we're going to see is this is substantially larger than the Spydeco Delica um, in the pocket, although thickness-wise, it is pretty similar, maybe a little bit thicker than your Delica there. And then finally, here it is against the Spydeco PM2, and what we're going to see is that um, this is a smaller knife, but again, the handle is not so substantially smaller. So um, th there is that. Next thing, why is this knife so weird? Well, at, at a first glance, you might think, oh, well, it's just a sliding bar style lock, which it is. Um, this part here in the back is very strange, but you might go, oh, well, look, you can just pop it out by, you can finger flick the guy, right? And you, in fact, you can. The weird part about this knife is that everything that is generally done with uh, springs or tensioned metal in a pocket knife here is being done with magnets. There is a magnet inside of this that is being attracted by another magnet, which is what makes this knife lock up. See? That's magnetic attraction right there. This little piece right here uh, that is being held tightly against the back of the blade is being held by a magnet. There's another one matching it. And then the blade itself, the detent of this knife is itself magnetic. We can see a magnet here and here to either side, and that force is what I'm overcoming when I press this guy out. And in fact, the way you press it out is using this little guy right here, which you just use to press against this surface here, and it flips the knife out. This is entirely different than anything I have ever seen in the pocket knife world. Um, the fact that he's doing all of this with magnets rather than springs is a complete novelty to me. I'm sure there have been other people to use magnets in, in knives before, but I've never seen a whole package like this and done in a production compelling way. So that is, that is absolutely amazing. And then finally, who the heck is Winter Blade Co.? Says right there, Winter Blade. Um, this is actually a guy named Brian Winters. He's up there in Minnesota, but this is being made in collaboration with a factory over overseas in China. Uh, so the knife itself is being made overseas, although he's made customs for a number of years up there in, in Minnesota. And then finally, actually, it might be worth giving a little bit of background just so you understand what's going on. He reached out to me sometime back um, with this guy, and uh, he sent me one of these guys. Um, this is a very, very early prototype, um, and this is a completely different locking mechanism. It's a frame lock, actually, and it has a little post that goes into the side of the knife. And um, some of the basic bones are there, but this is absolutely different. Um, when I got this, I was very, very impressed, and I, in fact, ordered a custom knife, and that's this guy right here. Um, I went with a slightly bougier set of uh, Damascus scales and uh, Damascus blade, um, again, with this uh, magnetic-style frame lock, which is a very, very different situation. Then sometime back after that, he sent me along a prototype of the early production version um, for a stealth review, so to speak, for a little bit of consulting. And then finally, this guy arrived, which is the final production version, a, a pre-production sample basically. Um, and so your final version should look pretty much identical to this one. Um, there, there really are no main uh, meaningful changes to be made um, uh, relative to this. This is great. So let's go on ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting knife. So on the good side, to start with, the price is, it's certainly not cheap. It's 375 bucks. I want to get that out of the way early. But the thing is, there is literally nobody else making this knife or anything, frankly, like it. Sure, would I love it to be a hundred bucks? Yeah, but it's a titanium knife. It's doing something entirely different. The blade is M390. It's beautifully made in all the relevant respects. I feel like, yeah, it's an expensive price, but I feel in no way, shape, or form ripped off, right? Um, This is completely unlike anything else, so it's hard to judge the value, but dude, 
it's not bad. So I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw that value under the good. I think this is, for what it is, absolutely a pretty decent value. Next thing, um, the, uh, the, the this guy, uh, as I mentioned, I've had the custom version of this guy for a long time, and it pains me to say this because the custom version is, well, an order of magnitude fancier, and it's handmade and all that kind of thing. But at the same time, um... I like the production version way more. This frame lock design, although very nice, um, is just much, much more difficult to do one-handed than this guy. The production version is just, um, in a lot of ways, it makes a lot of sense that he went this route. This is just better, frankly. And so I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of the production version here. Um, from an action perspective, from a carry perspective, this is uh, miles beyond. And honestly, it's kind of a bold move to make a production knife with that many improvements relative to your custom, but I really support it. And I think it shows that he's really trying his best to give people the very best thing they can at a, a more retainable price. So that's good. Next thing, size-wise, um, this guy, like I said, is coming in right under three inches, and I keep wondering why my ruler wants to go places with this knife. I mean, remember, this is magnetic. Um, but anyways, um, th th this guy is uh, a very nice size, coming in just under, as it now gets stuck to one of the other factors sitting on the table at the moment. Um, this is a, a very nice size to me. I have a bias towards smaller knives, but I think a three-inch blade length is going to get you, and in terms of sharpened blade length, we are coming in closer to two and a quarter, I'm sorry, two and a half uh, inches of overall blade length, but still, that, that that's a size that is good to go for most daily tasks. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, this is pretty solid. You have a couple of different grips. You can choke up a little bit for uh, detailed work here with this uh, finger choil slash sharpening choil, uh, which is there. You can come a little bit further back. You can even go reverse grip. It feels like he's rounded the handle for that. If that's your style, if you are a magnetic ninja, then by all means, you can go that route. Um, and honestly, the ergos are good. The only weird thing about the ergonomics is that there is kind of this hole here. So if you're gripping all day, there's kind of a weird feeling there. But um, I'll talk about this in a bit, but he's actually made a spacer sort of thing that he's going to make available that would fit inside instead of this lever here that completely alleviates that. So if ergonomically that's not a win for you, you can always try and pick one of those pieces up. That'll make things a little bit different. Next thing, I do appreciate some of the details here. The typography on this knife is absolute fire. I appreciate it very much. Um, the, the A is perhaps a little bit wider here, but okay, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll give that. But it is just, it's very nicely done. There are nice little details here, like, for instance, the G10 inlay on both the pivot as well as the thumb stud here. That's a beautiful thing. It's just, it is a very nice and very neat little knife in that way. I'm a big fan of the, the, the lot of little details here. Next thing, um, this guy has a very solid lockup to it. The way that this lockup works, by the way, is that there is a detent, but the detent is actually not related to the lockup at all. The detent is magnets back here, as you recall. But when I open this guy and then it slips into final position, then this little guy rolls basically onto the blade. And at this point in time, it's not being held in just by the strength of the magnet. I want to be very clear. I can sit here and I can spine whack this guy and it absolutely isn't going anywhere, right? What he's holding it at this point is the tension between the, uh, the well, this piece on the top here and the bottom of the blade. This is being held in by metal being compressed rest, basically. But you can pull it free, and then that allows the knife to unlock, right? But this is a very, very solid lockup. It works a lot like kind of a more conventional Axis-style lock, like, for instance, on, well, the, 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 the stereotypical Axis lock here, your Benchmade 940, where you pull this back, and then there's a, a tension, basically, against the top of the line here. It is only on one side, by the way, so this is not a fully ambidextrous knife, although I imagine a lefty could uh, manage this lock pretty effectively with the index finger over there, too. And it is worth noting that the uh, clip is uh, ambidextrous, so it is pretty ambi. I mean, can I do it? Yeah, okay, that's pretty ambi, right? Uh, my left hand is not skilled, and it can it has that skill. So there is that. But it is a very nice lockup, 100%. Next thing, and this is a weird thing. This little hole right here, I mean, partly, I imagine, for lightning and whatnot, but uh, check this out. You can put a glow stick in there. You can put in there also a tritium vial. He uh, mentions that a certain uh, dimensionality of tritium vial works just as well inside there. And is that at all useful or meaningful? No. Is it really cool? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm a big, big fan of that. Um, This has a, a really cool... Uh, the, 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 
it's a dumb option, but it's a cool one. So you know what? I'm 100% on board. Um, th 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 that is a great thing. This is, by the way, just a chemical glow stick in here. It's not tritium. Tritium doesn't generally grow, uh, glow quite that uh, brightly there, but still, um, nonetheless. And he did send this along for me to try, and I cracked this maybe five, ten minutes before this is being filmed. So anyways, there is that. That's a cool little thing. Does it matter? No. Is it cool? Yes, it is. Um, next thing, the action on this guy is great. Um, so you can flick it out there. And in fact, I just did. And I, I tried that a number of times, and I actually carried it with this little spacer installed, which again, completely removes the ability to press down on this lever here. This just slides in there. You watch my disassembly, you'll see it installed. Um, that works fine, but personally, this little push-through action, where you press down on this, which presses down on the bottom of the blade right here, which, by the way, is never accessible. You can never touch this blade, because this is being held in magnetically and gravity-wise, too. When you press this in the knife flies out there, and it flies out really satisfyingly. This has a great detent, a very strong detent, and frankly, again, a much stronger detent than the original custom versions. I am just a big, big fan of this. Um, th th this action is just super satisfying. It has one of the better, and then on the close, too, it's completely drop shutty because there's nothing pressing against the blade, right? There's absolutely nothing going on here except bearings. Um, it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and there's nothing that needs to go back up onto the blade detent-wise. This has a, a an absolutely beautiful free-swinging action as a result of that. I am such a big fan of the action of this. It is wildly good, and so that is great. Then, fine, uh, not quite finally, it has a very nice blade. Um, not only is it a relatively thin blade stock, it's not the thinnest thing ever, but it, it's fine, but it has a full flat grind across the entire thickness, leading to a very nice thin edge, right? This comes down to a beautiful little thin edge down here, and this cuts like crazy. The fact that it is sort of a... It's not quite a worn cliff, because there's a little bit of rounding to it, but it is sort of a reverse tanto sheep's foot. I suppose, um, whatever the heck this is, it cuts really well. It's very good for utility-style cutting. It's it's just great. You can choke up if you need to. This is a really good cutting tool completely independently. I mean, you can actually see some uh, use from opening, well, probably boxes containing over their everyday carry gear. Let's be real. But this has a very, very nice, weird blade, and I am a big, big fan of that. It is also M390, by the way. So it's not the case that he skimped on the blade steel. M390 is one of the better blade steels out there, chemically speaking. Speaking. And so that's absolutely a beautiful thing, and it is held an edge as I would expect M392 in my carrying. Haven't done any full crazy testing, but at the same time, yeah, that's neat. So there is that. And then finally, on the good side, that freaking resonance is fire, right? Um, you can tell, by the way, I, I believe it to be the resonant frequency of this bar at the top here. Because watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna deploy it. Yeah, see, it's this bar at the top, but, oh, man, is that nice. It has a very real, like, samurai feeling to it. Like, it's it feels like you're in a movie, right? You flick your blade out, and suddenly you're hearing, whooshing. yeah, it's badass. Is it important in any way? No, absolutely not. But as an acoustics guy, oh, yeah, big fan of that. So, uh, anyways, um, to me, all of that is the good. It has a great resonance, a great blade, a great action. It has a glow stick option, which is weird. It has a solid lockup. Um, some nice details here. It has solid ergonomics, a nice size. It is nicer than the custom versions uh, in terms of daily use, and it is 375 bucks with a case, which to me is absolutely fine. On the great side... This is as unique a knife as I have ever had come across my table. I mean, flat out. I There, there were some weird knives I've had on my table, 100%, but this is completely different. I don't even have to explain to you how weird this thing is, right? This is weird in every single dimension. Um, it, and it just comes out of freaking nowhere. Um, as I said, when he first brought this design to me, uh, well, actually, I haven't said this part, but I'll say later, I thought it was like, oh my God, that's stupid. Why would you ever do something like that? And it turns out, I just wasn't thinking right. I, I wasn't seeing it. And now that I see it, I see it. And oh my God. So this is a really unique knife in a world full of same, 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 same. This is wildly different. And by buying this, you are supporting one of the wildest and most innovative knife makers I'm aware of. He's on the level of like Grant and Gavin Hawk in terms of like, you did what? And I say that with all the respect in the world. So I, to me, what is great here is that this particular knife, as well as the other things coming out of Winter Blade Co., 
are completely wild and unique, and I respect the hell out of that, especially in a world of knives that is so boring and so same, same, samey lately. So to me, that is undoubtedly the great. This is completely unique. On the great, uh, I'm sorry, on the bad side, to start with, there is one question that you should ask, and that is, what are your local laws regarding automatic knives? You should talk to a lawyer, not a YouTuber, right? I am a random jackass. I'm not providing legal advice. However, there are uh, local knife laws sometimes designed to deal with switch blades, which are, by the way, dumb laws, and you should probably try and get them repealed, like, you know, knife rights and uh, AKTI helping you out there. But nonetheless, I digress. Um, there are sometimes laws that are written in such a way that an automatic knife is defined as a knife where you are not touching the blade to deploy it, and this is plausibly that, right? Um, Many of you are going to be like, oh my god, that doesn't matter, but the thing is, there's a level of, well, frankly, privilege in being able to say, I don't care about the knife laws, because you might not be somebody who gets stopped and, you know, frisked regularly, right? So, there is a legal ambiguity that you might have to deal with here, and so depending on where you're at, if you have laws like that, you might want to talk to a lawyer before you carry it in this configuration, or consider swapping into a backspacer like this guy, which completely removes that and makes this a knife that is still magnetic and still amazing, but instead is, um, well, only deployable by touching the blade. So it's kind of a weird thing, um, but there is an ambiguity there, and that is something that if you're really concerned, and that's, if that's a law that is liable to be applied to you, then, well, you, you might want to talk to your lawyer about that before you pick one of these guys up. Again, these laws are dumb, they're irrational, this lays that bare, but at the same time, it is something you should probably consider. Next thing, this does have a very strange little tiny bit of blade tang hanging out at the bottom here. This is a, a massive non-issue, right? There is no reason reason why this actually matters, but it is kind of there, and it almost feels a little bit uh, accidental, right? Like it didn't come down quite far enough. It's not actually a hot spot. It's not in any way bothersome, but it just feels like an oversight, right? That there's like this little tiny bump here, and it doesn't need to be. I don't understand why that's there. Um, they could have brought this down a little lower, made the, you know, it's just, it's a little bit strange. Next thing, this is not a particularly lightweight knife. Now, I'm going to be clear. It's, it's not bad, particularly. I mean, if we put this guy down here, what we're going to see is this this guy comes in at around 3.38 ounces for a little bit under three inches of blade. But at the same time, it's kind of big and it's kind of heavy, right? It, it's just, it's not a super svelte knife. It comes in markedly larger than the Delica, particularly on this dimension here. It's just kind of bigger in the pocket, right? Is it bad? No, not particularly. And it's relatively slim, so it carries reasonably well, but it is not necessarily the smallest option for this amount of blade. That's a thing to consider. Next thing, the balance on this guy is a little bit further back than I'd like it to be. The balance on this guy comes out around here. Is it terrible? No, absolutely not. But the fact that you've got a fair amount of extra stuff back here, including well, magnets and such, um, it means that this guy balances a little bit further back than I might like. Um, you know, I, naturally, I, it just feels slightly, slightly off. If there was some way that they could do a little bit more uh, internal milling or something like that, that might make things a little nicer, but it's not the end of any worlds. So and then finally, on the bad side, there is a little bit of stick on occasion. Um, right now, I've been using this because I've been writing the review all morning, so I've been using this a lot, but there can occasionally be a little bit of lock stick coming from this lock. Um, it tends to be worse if you've not used the knife for a while, right? That is a, just a fact of well, life. And in fact, he has very specific instructions on how to avoid that lock stick. And it has mostly, well, given I haven't not followed the instructions, but it's not been a massive problem. But there are definitely times where like the first deployment of the day, you're like, a little out of, okay, there you go. After that, it, it by and large is fine, but you can still tell that there's a little tiny bit of stiction here. And so I do hope that that is something that they can address in future runs of it or uh, future versions, because it just makes it a little bit less consistent than I might like, um, especially if you've not been using the knife recently. So to me, all of that is the bad, is that there's a bit of lock stick here. The balance is a little further back. It's a little bit, kind of large in the pocket, a little on the heavier side. Um, It has that little bit of blade tang down at the bottom here, which doesn't make much sense. Um, and then there is some legal ambiguity, potentially talk to your lawyer, not a YouTuber. On the ugly front, um, the only thing that is sort of ugly about this is not a design flaw, but it's just the nature of the design. This is magnetic, right? And so as a result, stuff sticks to it, right? This is going to 100% attract all of the various metallic items in your life. And this, well, 
that's the nature of this beast, right? You know, you pick this up and suddenly you have all of your metallic items collected around it. Um, this is not particularly a problem for me, but if you are carrying in your pocket things that are, for instance, well, ma magnetically sensitive, um, credit cards, although again, I've carried this in the same pocket as my wallet a fair amount. I've not noticed any issues with that. Um, maybe they're getting better at that finally, but nonetheless, it is magnetic. And as a result, if you are in a situation where magnets are problematic, also potentially for some some uh, lower end wristwatches. These this could be enough to magnetize them. Um, this may be awkward. And the other thing is, it may be awkward if you work in a metal shop where you're constantly surrounded by iron filings and whatnot. That could end up accumulating on the various surfaces. There talks about just using a little bit of sticky tape to kind of remove that if it comes up. But the fact is. These are high-powered magnets, and that's going to be ugly for some people in some situations. In my life, it's actually turned out to be surprisingly non-ugly. There were the occasional moments of like, why is that sticking to ball? But um, aside from that, it's been kind of a non-issue, but it could be an issue for somebody else, and that is something to keep in mind. So to me, that's ugly, but it's also kind of the nature of the beast, right? If you don't need magnets or if you don't want high-powered magnets on you, then don't freaking buy this knife. That's kind of the nature of the beast. So um, th 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 that is the ugly. On the, the final conclusion front, this this is a weirdly great knife, right? Um, it has a fine price. It's got lots of improvement over the prior iterations. It's a nice size, solid ergos, a nice use of the G10 inlays here, and nice details more generally. A very solid lockup. The glow stick and tritium options are completely unnecessary, but completely cool. Um, it has a great action, a great blade, a great resonance, and a completely unique approach in the modern knife market. You will, of course, want to check your local laws. The blade tang is hanging out a little bit. It's a little big for the amount of blades you get, and the balance is a bit far back. There's a little bit of lock stick from time to time, and some people will not be well served by carrying a bunch of powerful magnets, but honestly, this is exactly what I want to see in the modern knife world. Not magnets necessarily, but innovation and strangeness, and I think that's why so many people have been going wild for this. The last two years in the knife world, and I'm, I'm filming this right now in March of 2022, the last two years in the knife world have been completely stagnant in so many ways. It has been a time of rising price and diminishing interest because makers keep doing the same things over and over again. And to be fair, many of them are doing the same very good things, right? We've gotten a, a number of really nice make, uh, new models out there, but the fact is, for a lot of people, this is not there's not been much of interest. It's just been like, hey, another $40 line lock made in collaboration with an overseas company. Hooray. There's not been that much that's like blowing minds out there, right? And I think this is, right? Um, this is a case where the new hotness is compellingly both new and hot. This knife is the opposite of that. Uh, th th this is a knife that made me go, wait, what? And it really pushed on my conception of how knives can be and can work. When Winter Blade Co. first reached out to me, I think on Instagram, and this, had, this must have been like a year and a half or two years ago or something like that. Um, and he sent me, you know, just basic pictures of his original factor design, the custom version. Um, I remember him showing me this and showing me pictures. And I remember thinking to myself, that's the dumbest freaking thing ever. Like, why would you put magnets in a knife when you've got a bunch of other working options already? Why would you add additional problems to it? I'm used to the detent on the new one, which is a little bit harder, right? But when he first pitched me the, uh, the, 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 the idea, I just thought, this is, this is dumb, but okay, I'll humor him. I'll hear him out. And then he sent me uh, this guy, and it was just like, oh, my God. This is strange. This is scary, but it's brilliant, right? Actually spending time looking at this was just like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is good. This is really good. And so he sent me this guy, and I was impressed. And I was impressed enough that I wanted to support him in his journey of making more strange stuff, so I ordered a custom, right? And this is a great knife. It's a really fun knife, and it's a very unique knife. And it's, you know, so I, it's a really, really cool thing. And so, see, and this is like, okay, I like this Winter Blade Go guy. I'm interested. I want to see what's up next. Then he sends me the production prototype. And, I, you know, I remember thinking to myself, oh, my God, this is a real knife now. This is like... Like, this is a nice knife. And I, you know, I had some feedback for him. And then he sent me the final version. And oh my God, I am really, really impressed. Now, I want to be clear. This is not the only way to make a knife. When I say I am very impressed, this is one of the best knives I've handled 
in a long time. I'm not saying, you know, magnets are the way. It's a great knife, but it's a way rather than the way. And it will be a non-starter for many, partly because, well, it's still a fair amount of money. I can't deny that. I think you, you if you are a avid collector, an interested person in knives, this will probably feel like, oh my God, that's a fair price. But at the same time, it's still pretty pricey. And the thing is, it is going to have downsides for folks with magnetic issues in their life. And you can pay a, a lot less money for a knife that is also really, really good. There are lots of great knives out there. But considering the amount of excellence that this knife delivers in doing things entirely different than the way anybody else has, there is no real part of this knife short of like a pivot, which is pretty standard at this point. There's no real part of and, and of the blade. There's not, this isn't made like anything else. Like, it's just, it is fundamentally different. And at first, I thought that was a gimmick. Now I realize, yeah, it's a gimmick, but it also works. And considering the amount of insanity that Winterblade Co. has up on his Instagram every damn day, um, it's like apparently using these magnets is opening up the space some for him, right? He is able to do things, or at least he's claiming to be able. I haven't handled the other stuff yet, but he's claiming to be able to do things that are just like, oh my God. And, and it's weird, right? You follow his Instagram. I made this joke on Metal Complex's podcast. Like, I feel like he just puts up random weird things he's invented in the knife world, like, or just elsewhere, like he get robotic freaking kitten launches or something. He's not abusing animals, don't, but, but nonetheless, he's always doing something weird on there, and I respect the heck out of it. It seems like going this approach that he has, has opened up the design space also alongside the fact that he appears to be completely unconcerned with what the rest of the knife world is doing. And again, I say that with all the respect. You just look at his feet and it's just like, you're you're doing your own thing over there, aren't you, Brian? And that's great, because it leads to things that are entirely different. It leads to things that are just like, where did you come from? But I'm glad you came over, right? This is wild. And I've come to realize in the process of carrying this production knife, and carrying it a fair amount, because I wanted to make sure that I really liked it before I came on and said, oh my God, this is not dumb. This is brilliant. This is a knife that is entirely different from anything that's come across my table. And despite being weird and novel and gimmicky, it is still an incredible daily tool. It is still a pocket knife that is very easy to deploy. It is still a pocket knife that is very easy to put away. It still carries well. It still cuts well. This does all the things a modern pocket knife needs to do. It just does them entirely differently. And so... As a result, this is not going to be for everybody for a number of reasons, but that's not a problem as far as I'm concerned. This knife is its own thing. And what that thing is, is uncontroversially a gem. And frankly, I'm going to go a step further. This is an early, but I think incredibly strong contender for the knife of the year for 2022. It, like flat out, this is really, really, really good. Somebody is going to have to work very hard to impress me as much and make more of an impact in the space as this guy already has. Because I imagine that this may be the first major production magnetic knife that we've seen showing up, but I don't think it's going to be the last. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see who and how starts to adapt these designs for their own work. Because I think there's something really compelling here. So I I am really, really impressed with this knife, and I consider it to be a gem and an absolutely beautiful knife to have in my collection. I very much appreciate my custom, but this guy's probably going to get more pocket time just because, practically speaking, it is a really nice knife. So with a Blade Co., I mean, well done, but just shine on, you crazy diamond. <laughs> like, what the? I don't know what... I don't know how you tick, but by God, I'm glad you tick that way. This is really cool, and just sign me up for whatever you do next, because I'm sure it's going to be absolutely wild, too. So, anyways, there you go. Um, I hope this has been interesting to you. I hope he makes enough of these that everybody can get them, because, honestly, I think a lot of people are going to want to get these. So, uh, there you go. hope this has been interesting. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day, and I hope you uh, found my personality in this review to be absolutely magnetic. Hope this was a factor in your purchasing decision. Hope you thought this review was a winner. Blade go. Okay. Have a good one. Bye now.